Alright, hello everyone. Um, I'm here to tell you about Small Talk on the JVM, or more importantly, the challenges that I faced while I was pushing Small Talk on the Java virtual machine. Um, well, I went through, uh, I was hoping to lots of people, but just to get us all going and in the mood, can I have this side of the room where I go, say, Small Talk, and this side, Small Talk? Get ready, go. Oh. Excellent. This side. Small talk. Excellent. Now say red line. Oh. Excellent. Now say small talk. Oh. Excellent. Thank you. Now we're all in the mood. This side. Alright, so there's a lot of challenges as you expect to implement small talk on JVM. And uh, I'll go through some of those. But I'll also give you a demo. In fact, I'll, I'll do that bit now. So, if we have a look at, say, uh, this file here, that's an example of a uh, small talk script. It doesn't do much right now. It simply creates a new instance of the example class. If you want to see a class a bit more involved, um, this is the example of uh, the small talk class uh, in the single file. A version that you get with uh, doing things file based rather than image based um, with Redline. Uh, I borrowed a little bit of syntax from Coral because that's a great syntax. So if you're uh, looking at the schedule, please come back and see the Coral talk. Uh, here, instance methods start with a dash and uh, class methods start with a plus, but this is file based stuff. And the idea was that you could be in your environment and file it out, or if you just wanted to cut a method from the workspace, flip over to an editor, you can just paste it in, and the only extra stuff you have to do was put a minus or a plus. So obviously, uh, seeing this run, uh, you need to tell it the namespace for a class. In this case, uh, everything's under red line at the moment. So I'll run my uh, script and say. There you go. Um, so what happened there was uh, Redline executed the script um, and it brought in the entire runtime, it compiled the entire runtime and then executed the script. Now the script doesn't do much, it just created an instance of the example and currently for some debugging purposes I'm, I'm outputting some of the messages that are executed at the same at the time. So if I say change the script I make it do something that it shouldn't do. And then I execute it again. You can see here that um, it is actually executing that script. But I think uh, something that I think is important to point out is here. The fact that the stack trace tells me that it's actually coming from a Smalltalk source file. So you can actually step and debug with the Java debugger through a Smalltalk code and you can see um, a very reasonably small stack trace. But just let me know that it does work. And there's a bit of runtime coming, but I'll get to that. Okay, so uh, an image file uh, contains a series of bytes, or a lot of bytes, and every class in the system is in that one image file. For the JVM, you have to package things a little more uh, granular. Uh, each, each class that you put into the JVM must be in its own file, which is a sequence of bytes in class file format. What's important to note is that the class from the JVM's perspective is not a first class object, it's more like a dumb data structure. And that presents some challenges. Okay, so the unit of execution is a class, so to execute a piece of code, you need to load the class. Once you have the class, class, you can call the new instance method uh, in Java and it will carry you a new instance of uh, that class. Um, and when you do create that new instance, the init method is called, which is like this, uh, uh, it's like this anonymous constructor. And the init method exists on every class. And it's just part of doing the right thing under the covers that init gets called. But that's important for some other stuff that I'll catch up to and a couple of other slides. So the JVM also loads classes uh, into the JVM uh, using a method called load class. And when you load that class, you need to specify 
the full package and class name. So this part here, java.rang, is the package or the namespace, and string is the uh, name of the class that I want to load. Uh, and that's how you would directly load a class into the JVM. And uh, all of the classes loaded in the system are done uh, via a class loader. There's a system class loader, and you can actually have a hierarchy of class loaders. You can even have a class loader that will go and get the bytes from over a network. In our case, the small talk class loader um, looks for objects. So if I do a load class of object, it will actually look for an object.st file in the source paths, and when it finds one, it will then compile it. Uh, and later on, I'll, I'll take you through a bit more step by step of what happens when the object.xt file is loaded um, and turned into a running piece of sample. All, right. um, all classes are similar namespace. So java.lang, st.redline, the packages. Uh, so you can avoid uh, name collisions if you want to have an object called object. You can do that. You don't need to call it my fancy object and uh, prefix it with uh, you know, characters that don't that take away from the meaning of your, of your names. Um, but you must specify a fully qualified name to the JVM so that it knows which class you're talking about. I can't say the JVM load object. It doesn't know what that is or where it is. I must say load java.lang. So forth. I'll, I'll get to that detail uh, as well. But they're called packages in Java. I may use the term namespace or package interchangeably. So, one thing that's very problematic with implementing small on JVM is that it's very static. And by that, you need to specify the exact type when you call methods. It's okay to get a class in as far as a series of bytes, and then you create an instance of that class and then you've got an object. Um, but the methods, when you call methods, you need to be very precise. You need to uh, specify, you need to specify the target object. And here you can see that the package format, just to make things a little bit tricky, they've changed the dots to forward slashes. Don't know why you refer to them with dots in one place but a slash in another, but you need to specify the target object that you're going to call, and then you have to specify the signature of that call. You might think this is weird, I did, but that is saying that the first argument to this method is an object, and that this method returns me a string builder, and as you can see, it's really quite terse. So you've got to specify the entire package of everything when you call it. And that makes things a bit difficult, uh, especially if you want, mm, especially with uh, inheritance, because if, if you want to call a particular method on a subclass, you need to know the subclass. You can't just say it's a proto object, so do you deal with it from there. You need to be very specific. But luckily, for Redline and for Smalltalkers, everything in uh, Smalltalk is, a, is an object. So I really have one thing to put in that signature that it takes an object and it returns an object. So I don't need to worry about where I am in the hierarchy and so forth. Uh, the methods themselves, whilst they're also very hard to call because they're so static, um, you also can't change uh, a method without changing the class they're part and parcel of the same package. Uh, so if you wanted to change the, the source of a method, um, you would have to recompile the entire class. You can't just compile a method and, and, um, and have it work. So to get around that, I don't actually create uh, a method in the Java sense when you have a method. I actually create a first class object that is a method, and I put that in a method dictionary. So the two are kept separate, whereas standard Java will compile a method into the class and you can't change them after that. So I keep those things separate. Oops. Right. So I'll, I'll get down uh, in a little bit more detail now um, about how Redline itself is implemented on top of some of those challenges from the JVM. Oops. Wrong way. Right. So the tools that I'm using to build Redline, um, there is an app grammar. Uh, there's two grammars that I use. One is for the small talk language proper, and one is for a preprocessor. The preprocessor will do things like, as you saw from the code example, where there's a, a minus for an instance method and a plus for a class method. 
it actually takes those and expands them into a message to an object. Uh, that's the job of the preprocessor. Um, the preprocessor was written by Jim Idle. He's helped me out with this. Uh, Jim is the maintainer of the C version of the Ample tool set. Uh, but eventually what we plan to do is to make the uh, preprocessor, if not the grammar skinnable, so that other people can uh, come up with variations to the grammar, but they'll still work uh, as a front end to uh, Redline. Now, once the grammar has been compiled, there's an abstract syntax tree. That tree is then analyzed and we generate bytecode. To generate the bytecode and write it out in the class format, we use the object web as a library, which is very simple to use, very quick to, to write classes and methods. Um, and a lot of what we do is, or a lot of what Redline does is uh, rather boilerplate. We just specify in the hierarchy for a class and then uh, essentially creating one method uh, in that class, and I'll get to it. Right. So the best hierarchy for everything in Redline is ProtoObject, uh, very similar to some other small tools. And it's the uh, Java object that implements the primitives that make up small tool as far as uh, uh, Redline is concerned. And each primitive itself is actually a static method in that Java class. And this just makes calling it very easy. Uh, for example, if you were um, in Java and you wanted to call a method on a primitive object, you can do so very easily. You don't need to try and grab an instance or a reference to some other object first. You can just call this directly, more like an API. All right. Um, all objects are built sending messages to proto objects. And this is very important. Um, I could have taken Smalltalk source, compiled it into what looks equivalent in Java, and said, there, job done. But that isn't Smalltalk. It has to be built by sending a message to another object. Otherwise, you don't get all the dynamics and the things that you'd expect of a Smalltalk. By sending messages to an object, if you've declared an instance variable, then I'm sending a message to a class saying, give me an instance variable. If I have a method, then I'm sending a message to a class saying, please compile this method and add it to your method dictionary. And that means that unlike Java, if I want to add or remove an instance variable, I need to recompile the class. But with Redline and Smalltalk, you send a message to an object, whether it be at runtime or compile time, and you can change the, the behavior of the instance variables and the methods of the class. And likewise, you can change the entire hierarchy. So the compiler's job is actually quite simple. It just turns your source code into sends to an object. In this case, proto object. So there are two other, there are two other um, you know, partners in this crime uh, to do with Redline. And uh, other than proto object, we have proto method, which is the base of all methods. Again, methods in uh, Redline are first class objects, whereas they are not in Java. And proto block, which is the base of all the blocks. And these just help me with uh, most notably with stack traces. So if I have a stack trace that goes through a method, then you know that this is a method object that's got upset. If it goes through a block, then the block, some code within the block has got upset, uh, as opposed to a proto object, which could be anything. So to fit in with Java, um, we have a small book class loader. And as I said, when you say to it, give me this class, it goes through the source uh, files. So you can say, I keep my source in directory A, and directory B, and directory C. And then when you say, I want object, it will go and look for object.st through those source parts. If you have uh, a namespace, like uh, st uh, redline, then obviously it's going to go to the source path and then go through those folders. So the relationship between the package and where the source is, is treating the, uh, the package spec as a path. So uh, st.redline is you know, st slash redline as a folder. I that's good. Right. Because we use the Java class loader or that hierarchy, um, anyone in Java can actually load and use Smalltalk classes today. They simply say, give me this class. They don't even have to um, use proto object, it's just part of the class loader that comes uh, that gets loaded into the system. And whether you are asking for java.lang.stream or whether you're using asking for st.redline.collection, 
uh, the class loader will do the right thing. It will load the, class, the Java class and give it back to you, or it will load the uh, Smalltalk class and give it back to you. So that's transparent. So you can interact with Smalltalk from Java today. So, um, as I've mentioned a couple of times, the, there's namespacing in Redline straight up because we're basically modeling and namespacing on Java packaging, which seems to fit nicely with interoperating with existing Java classes or um, keeping things separate uh, in your own projects. For example, we might have a package you can file in um, that adds, say, the A small talk compatibility or we might have one that adds, you know, fairer compatibility, and that will keep it separate from the core um, uh, redline stuff. Right. So again, the, this, this package here, or this fully qualified named object, um, if you take that, the package part is just SD. Just to point out which end of that is the, uh, is the package. Now, each class, uh, and I mean the small talk class, which is a first class object in Redline, as you'd expect, contains its own set of imports. So I can import um, object and from a particular package, and another class can import object from another package, and those two won't collide, so they have their own instance of, uh, of a namespace. Uh, likewise, you might say that object, that name's taken, I can actually say import object as some other object. And it will use, you can then refer to it as some other object and we'll keep those namespaces separate. And that's um, really just made, uh, it's made, uh, it's enabled by the, uh, the underlying Java package structure. The class loader also partitions the applications within the JVM. So if I load, uh, if I load class A and then I change it, its hierarchy or its uh, attributes, then another uh, application can use another instance of the class loader, it can load A and it won't interfere with each other. So that's very good for running multiple applications on a single JVM. And that's typically done if you've got, say, like a web server. So now I'll tell you a bit more about uh, how Redline carries out its execution. Um, I'll show you uh, some of it uh, executing at the beginning of this presentation. So now I'll just give you a bit more detail about how, what are the exact steps that happen when you carry out that execution. So what happens when I execute uh, sd.redline.example? Right. First, we invoke the command to execute it. Stick it is small talk invoke command, or invoke class, whichever you want. Um, it's just the command line uh, launcher. Um, it's just a Java class. Um, the JVM will fire up, it will run that class. That class takes the argument. There you go. So the uh, stick creates an instance of the class loader, the small talk class loader, and it sets it as the context class loader, and that means everything that happens in that process now to do with class loading will go through the small talk class loader. It asks the class loader to bootstrap uh, the system. Uh, there's a couple of you know, cyclic dependencies in uh, Smalltalk, as you'll be aware. It's hard to load object that depends on class because class depends on object. So we need to bootstrap some of that and then later resolve those differences. And then it asks the proto object to resolve the, the object that we're trying to execute, in this case, the example class. There we go. So proto object actually uses a Java method. It says class. Um, give me the class for this name, and that internally to the JVM will go off and talk to the current class loader, which happens to be the small talk class loader. It checks the cache, of course, because we're not going to go and load these things again and again. Um, and then it searches the source paths for example.ext. In this case, I, there's a common Java convention to put source, a follow called source, and under that to have main or test, and under that to have a language. So I might have source main Java, but now I've got source main Smalltalk. And then under there, you can see that it's going through the package, which ends up being a file path to the actual object. So if you're saying, you know, I've got my, uh, a problem in the collection class, then there's a way in the package, uh, st.redline, there's a way to find out where it is on disk. Sure, we have the luxury of having an image, but in the redline world, we don't. 
Um, and I'll explain why at the end of the presentation. So obviously, once it's found that source, it invokes a compiler on that file. Uh, the resulting class is loaded into the JVM. And that JVM, oh really? Wow, okay. I'll hurry on. So then it creates a new instance of the class, and because it creates a new instance of the class, uh, the JVM will automatically call the init method because the init method is um, the way that the classes are initialized, and the init method ends up sending all the uh, messages that you've defined in your code. So I take the source, and essentially I create a class, I create an init method, and within that init method I start issuing out the bytecode that resolves into sends onto the objects that you're talking to. And hence when you load the class and you create a new instance of it, all the stuff in your source starts sending messages. Right, um, the compiler creates Java classes to contain the logic. Uh, the classes are some class of Predator object, and the package is based on the file path. Moving quickly here, because I've got the five minute signal. Um, right. So the small talk methods are encoded as message sends to compile message source. So when I hit see a method, I need to actually send a message to say to a class to compile the method, because at the time I've got that. Um, the class hasn't actually been created. But again, it's showing that everything's done as a, as a message to other objects. I'm going backwards, forwards, great. So methods are first class objects, as I said, and they're added to the receiver's method dictionary. Uh, all method objects have only one method, so this is a Java method. So I create, uh, I create a Java class, which is some class of program method, and then I give it one method only, and that method is called apply to, and that way when a message is, when a, a selector is resolved, we grab that method object and I tell it to apply to the receiver and then the logic in that is therefore executed against the receiver. Uh, block compilation, their first class objects as well. This is a subclass of proto block. Um, blocks are created when they're used and they also have apply to methods. So there's a very similar uh, handling to uh, normal small talk methods and the return semantics are handled correctly. There's a little bit of it's generally appropriate to make that happen, but essentially we're using the underlying exception handling mechanism of Java. Um, not the one that you see in the Java language, but the one in the JVM, which is a little bit more lightweight and cleaner. But I can tell you about that in more detail if you wish. I gave you the demo, so I'll skip it now because I'm running out of time. Um, so why, but before I, before I open up for some quick questions, you know, we all, we all know small talks, right? If we did, we wouldn't be here. Um, and I'm finding you know, it's a very hard thing to try and bring uh, new people into our community. There's a lot of barriers that they need to get over, the images, the browsers. Um, it's hard for them to see how good small talk is because those things present a barrier to them. So instead of bringing them to small talk, I'm trying to bring small talk to them by making things more file based where those barriers are reduced and they can use their existing tools um, and then deploy on the uh, Java virtual machine which is arguably the most used virtual machine in the world. Right? So, um, questions? Does uh, Java 7 with the, the, the new support for the NFM languages help you? I know that the project started earlier than Java 7, but uh, yeah. you look at uh, the so Invoke Dynamic helps with um, what I mentioned before, having to specify the exact signature of the method. Um, it helps with that, but it doesn't help with the need to be able to change methods at runtime. So Invoke Dynamic doesn't really help what I'm trying to do, because I'm, I'm pretty sure people want to be able to um, compile stuff on the fly, hit a debug, uh, a, a small talk debug point, write a new method and continue on. And to be able to support that, uh, the methods have to be separate objects. Um, however, if at some point uh, I look at the execution path and make some of those methods actual Java methods, then I'll use the dynamic. Um, there's a JMG which uh, is a JMG and for the also a dynamic language, uh, which allows you to uh, recompile the Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. 
you're saying, what doesn't work for Redmine? Well, uh, removing methods or uh, adding new methods or replacing them at, at runtime uh, and using program and so on. Right, okay, so it, it kind of has a, a different architecture and whenever you make a change, it really replaces the, uh, the objects. So internally, instead of pointing directly to an object, it points to an object that it points to the real object, allowing them to change those at runtime. And that creates a, a potential problem in JRuby where there's actually too much permgen space used because classes go into the permgen space. And I'm talking to Charles and I quite regularly about the things he's learned and done in JRuby and the things I'm learning and doing in Redline. And we do exchange notes quite a bit. So we've taken two separate paths. Um, how they end up for both of us, I guess, you know, time will tell. Um, but I found that it was certainly easier to get things done the way that I've done it. And I really do take my hat off to Charles and his team because they've done a great job with Jeremy. So I don't think they really answered your question. But, uh, but does, does that mean that um, it is hard or not possible to call Java from Smalltalk? Uh, you, can call, you can call Java from Smalltalk. Using the same syntax as Smalltalk? Uh, okay, right. So currently what happens when uh, there's a set of primitives that you can use to call Java, because what they actually do is emit uh, Java bytecode, therefore you can do anything the virtual machine uh, can do within your method. Uh, so you can call Java, Java can call Smalltalk. That's supported today. So, um, what kind of semantics of Smalltalk do you not yet support? Uh, the, the thing I don't support is become. Become is the only thing that I don't support. Can you do uh, subclasses that are not subclasses mm -hmm. of a object? That are not subclasses of an object? Of a object. I mean, the uh, object is just a, a subclass. Uh, a class is not a superclass. Right. Subclass is new. Mm -hmm. And you can actually do uh, more of those if you want to. Right, so that is possible too, because you, you, you set up a class hierarchy by sending messages. So there's no reason why you can't say I'll have you know, my object that does is a subclass of proto object and then just tell it that the superclass is can, different. Can I use a, uh, an object with three instance level as a class? An object with three instance The, the only, the only um, thing that the VM in a typical small talk needs of, of an object to be a class is that it has three slots. All right, yes. Can you do that? Uh, you know, maybe we can explore that afterwards yeah, um, yeah. because I'd like to. I'd like to know what the case is, but I don't. It, off the top of my head, it doesn't seem impossible. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm actually quite impressed from uh, how fast uh, you learned uh, from the start to when the first discussions about Redline were from to the state of now. This is really impressive. Well, I, thank you very much for that. I'd like to say it's possibly more impressive because I have. 23 year old boys, and the only time you get to code small talk is an hour before they get up and an hour after they go to bed. <laughs> Thank you very much for your help, too, Marcus. I could not really understand how. Um, so, how do you. Uh, what do you do this to if false? This is a method that is executed each time I uh, send a message to a Boolean. And I could not really understand my representation if I have a method that I write in small talk. What is regenerated in Java? How do you generate the bytecode in Java? It's completely fuzzy for me. Oh, okay. So you don't generate bytecode from what I'm talking from the question from me. I, I'm not quite understanding you, Stefan. Um, so, so you have a method. You have a small talk method. You execute. You compile it, what do you get? When you compile a small talk method, what you do, what you get is an instance of a Java class, a subclass of proto method. So if your method is yourself, um, you'll get a subclass of proto method called yourself, and it has a Java method on it called apply to. And when you call that method, it just takes that, that method, calls the apply to method with a particular receiver. And then the logic that you have inside that method has been encoded as bytecode equivalent of message sent. 
Uh -huh. Okay. And, and so, so why this is only why there is only one argument to the like two? No, no, I didn't say there was only one argument. It takes the receiver as an argument while sending other arguments ah, that are applicable okay. to the method. So this means that for example the conditional like if true, they are treated as messages. The, sorry? They are treated as messages, the conditional. If true, this is this Yes. Way. Yes, they're treated as messages. Okay. At this stage. There's no performance tuning done yet. The idea is to get it right and get people using it and then look at performance tuning back out. Okay, so that's thank you, speaker. Thank you.